Hey everyone and welcome to my first video. Uh, I'm Vlad and to start off I would like to introduce you to what I believe should be baby's first server. This is the Old Faithful ProLiant DL380P Generation 8 and I would like to go over an in-depth overview of the pros and cons, advantages and drawbacks of a server like this, what's good, what's bad, uh, and my overall experience with it. Um, starting from the front of the server, uh, you would have your uh, standard ODD bay, which is where your CD-ROM CD would be located. And in my scenario, I have two four bays, uh, two times four bay, and the front console as well as the identification tag. Uh, coming further down the back, I do apologize it was taken apart uh, just for the purpose of this review. So as I go, I will slowly rebuild it and uh, hopefully we can uh, go further in debt that uh, I was kind of hoping for. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see everything with its time. So um, from front to the back, as you can see, the uh, SAS backplane for eight, two and a half inch drives and what you have over here is what used to be the uh, CD drive. This was replaced with, and I have it over here. Whoopsie daisy. One of these slays, which is a um, converter caddy with uh, part number 720-218-01, which is a framing carrier. Um, I find these to be extremely useful because as you can see, you have this caddy right here, which can uh, be populated with an SSD. And the back of this uh, carrier, the wonderful thing is that it gets converted to an eight plus seven uh, slim SATA, and you can use the uh, integrated cable, so, uh, data plus power, and plug it directly into the motherboard. So that being said, uh, you have your space with your connectors for your uh, six fan configuration. Uh, six fans are absolutely mandatory if you're running dual socket, which uh, as I am right now, uh, just a second, I was having a little bit of difficulty. These are your RAM slots. These take registered DDR3 I believe the fastest speed was 1600 megahertz. Uh, 1866 is compatible, but it will only run at 1600. Uh, these are socket 2011. My system is configured with two Xeon E5 2697s and the total RAM is 128 gigabytes. Uh, the maximum configurations are 384 gigabytes registered them or 768 load reduced. Sorry, I had to get my uh, bearings. Here is the shroud that usually goes in with it. And uh, we're gonna go in the back towards the uh, onboard features. Now, the uh, Gen 8, the uh, Gen 8, especially the, uh, the P model is uh, fairly loaded in terms of features uh as you can see i have both of the risers and dual power supply so these are the 750 watts uh but coming back onto the main board i just wanted to show you a little bit uh what the server comes with you got your standard uh integrated lights out chip the flex -Long mezzanine the onboard and integrated p420 I believe this was based on the uh, LSI 2008 chip. Don't quote me on that. Uh, it's um, Patrick from Serve the Home who does a very, uh, very in-depth uh, review on that. And uh, I actually have to go back and do my homework on that one because I don't really remember if it was the LSI 2008 or HP had a custom chip on it. But... Uh, there's there's pros and cons for this i will go into that in in just a minute the mezzanine port right here 
I want you guys to understand this is not a standard PCI Express slot. It is a special port which only plugs with flex long cards, even though it's roughly the same size as an X8 uh, PCI connector. Please do not plug any PCI Express cards in here. You will burn out your motherboard and your card. Um, so coming over here, if I'm going to take out the, uh, the riser slots, we can have a little more in-depth view of what's in here. Just a second here, please. And riser one goes. And riser two goes. These are not standard PCI Express slots. Please do not connect anything directly into it. You require the risers absolutely. Okay? So going on, you have your CMOS, you have your SD card. This is a full SD card, by the way. It's not a micro SD card, something to note. Um, you have your eight plus seven or seven plus eight. I don't know how you guys want to address it. Uh, your SATA connector over here with power. Uh, I don't remember. I think this was the uh, chipset under here. I have to uh, take a look at the uh, markings over here, but I'm fairly certain this is the chipset. You have your TPM connector, which is a 21 uh, pin. If I remember correctly, that was uh, TPM 1.2. As mentioned earlier, your ILO, uh, integrated lights out, which is integrated lights out version four. And coming in to what I believe is the uh, man of the hour, the uh, integrated uh, serial attached SCSI or the integrated SAS controller, which uh, contrary to popular belief is in my opinion, a very good chip. Uh, one of the drawbacks of this one of the biggest drawbacks, in my opinion, is that it's integrated. That means if this, for whatever reason, becomes unserviceable, you cannot hot swap it. You would have to disable it through the BIOS and, you know, waste a PCI Express slot uh, so that you can get your replacement. However, one of the pros is that it's integrated and it's taken into consideration in the operation of the server. And you don't have to waste the PCI Express slot for its functionality. Uh, the mezzanine card over, uh, sorry, not the mezzanine, the uh, flex LOM uh, cards over here. I have uh, two 10 gig connectors, which are RJ45. I believe the connector is, uh, just a second here. Am I going to find it? No, but if I if memory serves me right, this is a 533 uh, SFP plus 5533-T for the RJ45. Um, you got your standard serial. You got your integrated lights out and four USB 2s as well as the uh, UID identifier. Uh, when I bought this server in the beginning, I wasn't aware, or sorry, it's not that I wasn't aware. I didn't understand that the, um, integrated lights out connector was not shared. I thought that the server by itself could have a local area network connection through this port. And it was through a hard lesson learned in life that I understood that this was not a shared port. So when I bought it, it came without the mezzanine card. Now, there are other cards, which are the four port variant of gigabit. And these guys are the 366 FLR. As you can see, one gigabit four port adapter uh, that usually comes standard with, if you, if you cannot find it with the server being sold, um, eBay is chock full of them and they're very, very inexpensive. Uh, but that being said, the age of this hardware is fairly advanced that, um, finding a 10 gig card for this would be very, very easy. <clears throat> now 
one of the sorry not one of uh, some of the advantages of these servers are that you can very easily get started with it uh, they require virtually no maintenance because they are end of life their firmware is as far as it'll go uh, not advocating for piracy but wink wink nudge nudge you can get the software in relatively uh, niche places and uh, once you get it all up to date uh, sadly it doesn't have uefi or secure boot but it does support up to and including um, windows 2022 uh, the front disc the one that you would be replacing your uh, DVD drive with for an SSD, for example, works directly off of the, ch the SATA chipset and the hard drives or sorry, the hard drives or SSDs that would be in your front bay are what's going to be directly connected to the uh, SAS controller. Now, if you decide that you want to use this for a ZFS file server, understandably so, you can do it. However, you have the 25 variant of it, which the only, uh, some of the main differences are that you do not have this, I don't know what to call it really, like a media bay. And the SAS backplane is connected via a PLX chip, which is a divider, which gives you access to 25 hard drives instead of just eight. Uh, P420, is a SAS 3 so you do have um, I believe it's an 8 gigabit limit uh, sorry no it's an 8 gigabyte per second limit yep yeah. and that's across uh, all eight lanes so I believe it comes down to about a gigabyte I believe per lane um, for home use and non-professional um, environments, something that you want to practice in your home lab with, this server is a wonderful beginner, or as I called it, baby's first server. Uh, Dell's equivalent, the, oh, bear with me here. I believe the 720 XD, which is literally one for one equivalent of this guy. Uh, is also a wonderful machine. However, they are a little more expensive than these guys. And they have some features that this one lacks, mainly UEFI and Secure Boot. And I believe that they are actually still maintained. Uh, however, I'm not going to be going too much into detail about it. Um, it's not a bad choice. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And I will make a second video showcasing the Gen 9, which is literally the one above this with the 2011-3 socket. Thank you.